the only reason why the Edgeworks logo is here is because um, I created this while working for Edgeworks, which is Robbie Robson's company, if you don't know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Edgeworks sponsored me to create this, um, but it's free open source under a Creative Commons license. Um, so you can do anything you want with this except for sell it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to skip. There's a bunch of um, stuff explaining XAPI and some of the goals and purposes of this, which I'll get into later, but I just want to jump into um, this, which is um, the top level flowchart um, to describe, you know, the entire process. It's not really just design, but it's all the way through to, you know, taking actions. You can see number 10 there, um, taking actions, you know, based on the data that you've collected and, and then going back and redoing the design. Um, and by the way, before I forget, I did this in PowerPoint because I wanted people to customize this for their own local needs. So um, mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a PowerPoint template. It's pretty simple. Um, there's a couple of interactive features uh, I'll get into in, in a second. Um, but that's what I really want people to do is, you know, use this for their own purposes and customize it however they need to. Um, let's see. So let me just go through a little scenario here. So we're at the top level, as you can see. Um, these dotted lines show an expansion of a flowchart object. So if we want to see details on number three, specify XAPI elements, properties, and values. Um, so let's drill down into that. So we have a flow chart that's a child of that parent you were just looking at. Um, and there's a bunch of stuff in here. And one of the things that um, I really was driven by in creating this is just the idea of contextualizing all these steps and decisions and really answering the question, you know, what do I do next? And giving you an audit trail for all the, all the decisions and considerations that you've that have gone into your thinking up to that point. So um, that's, that's kind of a driver for rendering all this in a flowchart form. Oh, and by the way, the um, attribution for each chart is up here on the upper left. So, so I came up with this, um, this content here, this is, it says Edgeworks, mm -hmm. um, but I used a variety of materials, um, Sean Putnam, uh, Megan Torrance, um, a bunch of articles, books, et cetera. Um, so anyway, so we've drilled down into this and then let's drill down into it. And we don't need to get into the content here. Um, if you do have any content comments, um, you can send them to me. And in fact, at any point, if you, if you have any comments about content or format, um, please send them to me so that I can update the master because I really want this to be a, a community effort and you know, building something based on community input. So Peter, uh, yeah. sorry, can I interrupt a bit? Here, uh, I think you, if you go back to previous slide. Okay. Um, so the, the second is designed with a high level SAP and analytics solution. And for the whole purpose of this kind of project, there might be some data that's available in SAP format, but some other are not. And also, um, there are some kind of metadata or personal data that you will not uh, you will not um, express that data in SAP format. So should we pull to this high level to consider SAP data is only one kind of all the data format? Yeah, that's a really good point, Jesse. So. Um, mm -hmm. Well, let's see if I don't remember if I really dealt with that. Um, I just drilled down into this level. Not really. Um, so, I, by the way, I, yes, I used to work for ADL. Um, 
-hmm. but I'm not, I'm not an expert in, you know, XAPI and XAPI uh, learning design. Um, I, this is, this is actually a means for me to, to, to learn um, and reinforce what I already know. So, um, so I'm writing that down. That kind of, that's a good thing for me to think about and include in this. Um, okay, so, so this is just a, a, a random path that I'm following just to show you that the way that, you know, interactive features work here. Um, and then let me drill down into, uh, let's see, 3.4, define actor elements. So, so now we're in the third level down from the top and you can see this decision tree and then you have these little uh, blue buttons. Um, and so that's just kind of a static information screen with, you know, considerations and details for applying that particular step. So let's look at 3.4.2, are groups anonymous or identified? So it's not a flow chart, it's just a, a static information screen. So that's the information about that. Um, and then if you want to go up to the parent chart that this sort of came from, um, this is supposed to work. It's not working quite right, but well, okay, it does work. Um, so th this is definitely still developmental. Some of the interactive features, you know, aren't quite working yet. It's a little bit funky, but but that's the basic idea is um, it's, it's just an inter interactive flowchart basically. And, you know, each one has attribution back to a source. So it's called a reference model. You can see the title here at the top, XAPI enabled learning design reference model. It's called a reference model because it is a collection of, um, you know, different people's work. It's not a, an original, built from scratch, single source um, piece of IP. And it's, and as I said earlier, it's free and open source. You can do anything you want with this, but it really is a collection of um, knowledge. And, and in fact, like I said before, this is, this is kind of my own personal knowledge management tool or, or even sort of a note taking tool. Um, that was kind of my selfish, you know, impetus for doing this. So, so uh, Peter, I, so that um, you express the SAPS spec in a flowchart format. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's very helpful. Uh, do you intend to include all the content of SAPS spec into your flowchart? Uh, not the spec, but this is the design process. So what does a designer need to know in order mm -hmm. to you know, design and, and implement a solution? Okay. So, yeah. yeah, it's I, I don't intend this to get into a lot of really technical details. I mean, mm -hmm. eventually it could maybe, but um, this is really for the ISD. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and, and, and the, the, the real um, challenge that this tries to address is, and, and I did this for, and I'll show you actually, um, I did the same thing for, when I was at ADL, I did this for, um, and learning, mobile learning. Mm. And this is a very, very, very extensive treatment of, it's, it's really just all of ISD. You can see this is the whole ISD process here. Mm. Um, so I felt like I needed this framework, the, the entire ISD process framework to be able to hang the mobile learning stuff onto it. And so you can see some charts like um, this one is just all mobile learning stuff. So they're, you know, color coded. If it's reddish, it's a mobile learning related thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's what I did at ADL and um, back in 2013. And, and it's really just, you know, answering the question, how do I design for this new technology? Um, people are just applying, you know, their old design paradigms and there's a lot of unique things about mobile learning that people need to know. So, so that's why I did this. And we had a whole community um, with, I think it was about 10 meetings and about 40 people mm -hmm. who uh, worked on this. It was, it was an ADL community thing. Some of these charts are very elaborate. 
uh, blah, blah, blah. And I actually got uh, Walter Dick of Dick and Carey to bless this because it's basically a rendering of his um, textbook in flowchart form. Mm -hmm. and, and so then um, I went to the Realities 360 conference, which is actually happening right now in San Jose. Um, that's the X Reality conference that eLearning Guild puts on. And I went to that last year and I got real excited about doing this same treatment, but in X Reality. So then I created um, this enhanced reality thing, which also uses the entire ISD process in not only keeping the M learning stuff, but adding the X reality stuff. So, so this thing just bloated up to 300 slides. <laughs> wow. um, and so, um, so then when I thought about doing this for XAPI, I thought, um, wow, I, I don't really feel confident enough about knowing everything I should know about XAPI to be able to hang it on the ISD framework yet. So what I did for XAPI is um, it's just the XAPI process without any reference to the overarching ISD process. So, so what I'm going to do eventually is <clears throat> you know, insert and embed this into the ISD process. But right now I just felt like this is enough for me to deal with, you know, just the XAPI uh, design process. Um, so that's kind of the backstory. Um, let's see. <clears throat> oh, and so I should mention, um, so there's a subcommittee um, we've met about two or three times, and it's Jesse, Alan, <clears throat> Andrew, John, Kevin, uh, I think that's it, um, are on the subcommittee. And we've been, we don't have a regular schedule of meetings. We've met two or three times, and um, the meetings and agendas are totally ad hoc at this point. But please join us if you would like. Um, I'm, I'm kind of at a point where I don't, I mean, if I learn something new, I, I put it in here, but I would like to have some more uh, more eyes and brains um, on this, and you know, build it into a real community product. And it's not meant to be prescriptive. These, are, it's just one possible path. People can, you know, look at this and no, I don't agree with that. I, I do it a different way, whatever, you know. I'm, I'm not trying to make this into this sort of um, authoritative monolithic system that I'm proposing everyone should follow or something like that. And it's definitely not one size fits all. It's, it's really just um, to infor inform people about things they should be thinking about <clears throat> and um, thoughts of different, you know, different authors, and I'll show you the, I'll show you the sources that I've used so far. Oh, here it is. So these are the sources I've used so far. <clears throat> um, but it's really just stimulating thought, you know, that's really the, the objective, um, getting people to think about, you know, does, does this look right? Does, does this fit your design process? Um, and it's also, it's, it's very much a mix of algorithmic and heuristic knowledge. <clears throat> so some things are really concrete steps, um, you know, and there's kind of a right way to do it or and a wrong way to do it. And some things are very heuristic, um, just sort of a fuzzy guideline. Um, but one of, one of my thoughts is that eventually this could be an on-ramp to <clears throat> um, you know, an AI design tool mm -hmm. um, that would really automate some of the, you know, making some of these decisions. And um, because some of them, some of them, like I said, really are algorithms. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of it. Uh, let me just look at my notes. Um, oh, and this is also very much a template that could be used for other learning technologies. Um, so that's that's another one of my goals is, you know, when a new learning technology comes up, 
you know, just render the design process in terms of this flowchart. And so I've already done it for mobile learning, um, X reality, which the e-learning guild calls enhanced reality. So that's what I call it in my flowchart, but I'm actually probably going to change it because it seems like the industry is moving towards X reality as the accepted term. Mm -hmm. um, but, and then finally, my, you know, my ultimate goal is also after this gets um, fairly stable, I do want to tie it into the ISD process and do the same thing that I did for mobile learning and, and X reality and just plug it into the whole, you know, overarching flowchart. So any comments, questions? And if you do see something um, that looks wrong, you know, content wise, uh, let me know. You can, in, in PowerPoint, you can um, tag objects. Let me see. Um, you can tag a comment to an object. And so you could tag something and send it to me. Under the review tab, you can, you know, you can put a comment in and just write something in there. Oh, okay. So I will ask the first question. Um, Peter, do you think we can merge this with other learning design flowchart? Like yeah. the mobile learning and the, the enhanced reality. Learning. Yes, yes, it definitely can be done, and 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 I've already done that kind of thing with enhanced reality being added. You know, mobile learning is added to the generic ISD process chart, and then enhanced reality was added to the mobile learning chart. So this could be added as another thing, because that that really contextualizes it. It you know you're not doing all of these things in isolation. You're doing it in terms of a whole learning design. Yeah. You know, so, so this is, this is fine, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily do your whole design and then um, go back and, you know, after you've done all that, identify the needs and goals for, you know, learning design analytics, you, you wouldn't do it that way. Yeah. So, Maybe in the middle, when it comes to learning design choices, for example, you choose mobile learning or you choose VR, then you will link to the VR, the enhanced reality uh, flowchart. Right. And uh, in the enhanced <coughs> reality flowchart, you, you can see how SAPI support the, the design um, and the evidence collection. Right. Yes, I think that's exactly the intention. And, and, th and that's where it gets really, really complicated. And, and so again, that's why I did this in isolation because just removing that layer of complication for now. But once this thing is really stabilized, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Because you're, you're doing this, you're doing an XAPI design on top of a technology. Yeah. So if you're doing X reality, then you're doing, you know, you're doing something, you know, an X API thing with it. Mm -hmm. um, but some of these charts um, I'm pretty shaky on. Um, and, and, and there's a lot more content. I mean, this is one of the more complex ones, but most of them are pretty simple like this, and they need to be fleshed out more. Again, I'm not, and this one's TBD. I'm not, um, I'm not really an expert in this, and, you know. Yet. I used to be kind of at, X, at, at ADL, but it's been a while. And, and some of you may know that I, wrote a, um, an ADL paper called Choosing an LRS. Yeah. Yeah. I, ha I haven't updated though in, in about two years. So that should that 
LI's report be included in this one? Yeah, so it's some, some of the content in this is from that. Um, but, but yeah, more, more information about LRSs and how, how, to, how to choose one, you know, how to configure, blah, blah, blah. That should probably be in here. So I haven't had a lot of time to work on this, but um, yeah, again, I, I, would, I would really like to um, just ramp up some community you know, meetings to really hammer some of this out and really make this a, a you know a product of the um, decision tree su uh, subcommittee. I guess um, you can ask for a suggestion about references for SAPI and learning analytics. Yeah, that's a real really good thing. So. Um, the references I have right now are these. Yep. Um, but if somebody if somebody ha has any more, and, and specifically design for a you know learning analytics solution, you know not necessarily relying on XAPI because as we know now we're starting to talk about um, collaboration with Caliper and yes stuff like that. But yeah, if anyone has a, a suggestions for, for a reference. So it's a general uh, learning analytics or even in business context is, right. is maybe in business context it's not called learning analytics, but it's anyway, it's analytics project. Right. Yeah, the good reference for analytics project. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I started talking to my nephew who works for the parent company for North Face about uh, <clears throat> using XAPI for business um, analytics and he was, he was pretty excited to hear. He didn't have, he never heard of it. And, you know, the way I presented it is like, well, you know, it's, yeah, it was created for learning, but it doesn't have to be. And, and if you present it as just a data analytics tool that happens to be right now optimized for learning, um, but it's really for you know business analytics, people you know they're very receptive. So that's about it from me, um, unless anyone has any questions or comments.